Okay, perfect. Thank you. Well, first, thank you very, very much for having us and uh, asking us to do this for the Humane Society. Um, hi, baby. Oh, gosh, I have to do this. You guys should just see this pig because he's so funny. Andy, say hi. Say hi, Andy. Oh, he's too busy eating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, these absolutely amazing animals have captivated many of many people with their intelligence, their personality, their uniqueness. And today we want to talk a little bit about the truth and the reality of owning a pot pig. pig. A lot of people don't have all of the information and they get pigs that they can't handle or they get bigger than they are anticipating. And uh, we end up with a lot of pigs in the shelters and being given away free on Craigslist. Lyric, where are you going, Lyric? I guess Lyric has decided that she wants to go out. <laughs> Sorry. So what we want to do, first of all, is we want to bust the myth. Uh, there are tons and tons and tons of breeders out there that breed these poor pigs to death. And they, uh, they, if you've ever looked into having a mini pig, you've probably looked at breeders, because that's typically where people go the first time. And uh, they hear everything you can imagine about pigs and how tiny they are and micro teacup. Um, but many people say, do they exist? Absolutely. We're looking at one right there. Many pigs exist because a normal farm hog is about a thousand pounds and anything under 300 pounds is considered a mini pig. So they may not be very many, but they are indeed what we consider a mini pig. The breeders go out there and uh, you can go ahead and move to the next slide. <laughs> you may have heard the term teacup, micro, micro mini, nano, pocket pig. They're all made up names and it's all a gimmick um, and they're flat out lies. They just simply do not exist. They breed very young pigs and that's who I'm showing you right now. This is Lyric. Pigs can get pregnant as early as three months of age and they carry for three months, three weeks, and three days. So at six months of age, they're having babies. Babies having babies. And then the breeders will bring somebody in and say, well, look how tiny the mom is. So the babies aren't gonna be any bigger than that. And believe it or not, they get thousands and thousands for these baby piglets that are not going to be tiny. They also take piglets away from their mom at a very early age and they say that they're eight or 10 weeks old and completely weaned and they sell a bill of goods that is not accurate. A lot of the babies die because they're sick and they can't be away from mom that young. Um, and they, people believe that they're older than they are. I've taken in many, many, I have one right now actually that's four weeks old, I think, maybe. Um, they tell people at a year they're full grown. Well, we don't want to watch her go to the bathroom. Um, they'll, at a year they're full grown when in fact they don't stop growing until they're three to five years old. Uh, so they're going to get considerably bigger from where you see them at one years old or even less. Um, so on the next slide, there are, these are pictures of what a pig will look like at certain ages. So the very newborn, newborn, that's not one of our piglets, but that's what a newborn piglet looks like. You may not see people take them away that early, but it's pretty darn close. You see after that, uh, the next one is at three to four weeks old. This is Oliver. Um, and then six to eight weeks old, you can see how their face starts to mature. And that's a lot of how you can tell how old piglets are when you're looking at them. At three months old, they're really starting to mature. And, and for a female that's mature enough to get pregnant. And then at six months old, you can see how big they are, probably 50, 60 pounds. Um, uh, Oliver is actually the very, on the very first slide, there's a picture of a, a cute pig. That's him. That's Oliver. He's a resident here. He was actually purchased at a swap meet at a couple of weeks old and uh, the lady didn't know what she was doing but she knew that he was in a very bad situation and so she purchased him anyway and she got him to us he was crippled he could not move his back legs he didn't stand up and he was being fed pig pellets when he was way too tiny so he couldn't process them so um it's very 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 common unfortunately and people just don't know any better lyric here let me just clarify that lyric is not a bald piggy typically Pigs blow their coat twice a year. So right now during summer, they're going to blow everything off so they're bald and then they'll come back with a real light coat of hair. And then when winter hits, they're going to blow over the coat again and it's going to come big, thick and heavy. So that's, we're all in the process of that. Um, and these are not pot belly pigs next door, so they do not blow their coat. But all the pot bellies do. Hi, sweetheart. Um, so Lyric had her babies at six months old and then they threw her away because she was getting too big to show people that she was a tiny pig anymore. Um, you can go ahead in the next slide. There we go. People say they want a tiny pig. They don't want their pig over 75 pounds. Well, take a look at those pictures 
and you see how little that pig is, and that pig is about 80 pounds. You have a Great Dane mix, 100, 120 pounds right next to them. Um, pigs are very, very dense and heavy in weight. So what you think may be a really small pig is probably a 50 pound pig, and uh, that's not unusual. Um, and then right next to it, the pictures of a, what a small pig would look like when they're a couple of months old, six months old, nine months old, and they grow so incredibly fast in the first couple of years um, that it's amazing how fast they grow. They grow to their three to five years old, and we'll talk about that in a couple of slides down. Um, you can go ahead and switch. <laughs> Hold on just a second, Terry. Um, is everyone able to see the slides and Terry's shared video? So right now it shows I don't want my pig over 75 pounds. If you could just put in the chat that you can see it. Okay, wonderful. Uh, is the sizing right? Does it look um, you can see enough live pig and enough um, PowerPoint? Okay. And then we did have a hand raised from Okay. Elizabeth. A question, Alyssa. Um, I can allow you to talk. I can unmute you here. So, Alyssa, I've I've unmuted you. Did you have a question? All right. I guess I can't unmute. But if you have a question, I think you can unmute yourself, or you can feel free to just ask it in the chat. Oh, no question. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go ahead and move on to the next slide. And again, thank you all so much for your patience with me. This is my very first webinar format on Zoom. Oh, thank you for your patience. Beautiful pig there. That's lovely. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is Andy, actually. Andy is a Kuni Kuni pig. They originate out of New Zealand. Uh, we have a little, we have a few of everything here, I think, sometimes. But Andy and Kuni, uh, Andy and Wyatt came out of a slaughter auction. Um, and we, res we rescued them and three others with them. They're uh, the friendliest pigs on the planet, I swear. They're really wonderful animals. Okay, so. A lot of breeders will tell their clients, if you feed them how we tell you, we will guarantee their size. Bye, Lyric. We'll be back to see you. Um, and unfortunately, I can't take you out there, but we do have a pig here who was starved. Um, and she was purchased, everybody's in bed. She was purchased from a breeder and they fed her tiny amounts. And when she got here, she was three years old. And her head was a normal size, but her body was emaciated and really tiny. She has a club foot. She has really bad arthritis. And she is just not a super happy pig. She's going to have a very short lifespan. And she's going to um, have a hard time most of her life. She's, she's really kind of a cranky pig because she's just not comfortable. We keep her as comfortable as we can. Um, she's of good weight now and she gets lots of attention, but beyond that, if you're a dog or a cat, forget it, she's gonna bark at you. So, if you wanna own a pig, you've got to make the healthy choices for them. Not for them to stay small, but for them to feed them appropriately. Now this chart on here is for Missouri, and Missouri makes a youth feed, and I do recommend that for the very first year. Um, as they get older, I move them to something different, it's certainly your choice, but there is a chart here to follow on how much you actually feed them. Um, pigs always act like they're hungry all the time, and that's one of the biggest downfalls, I think. I'd like to show you a pig, but everybody seems to be inside their houses. Um, that's one of the biggest downfalls, I think, is because they, uh, they act like they're hungry, so people want to be nice and feed them, and then you end up with a big, huge, roly-poly pig at a very young age, and um, it's not good for them. They can become fat blind, and they get so fat they can't even walk, so you really want to try to be extra careful and very careful on their portions. This is Rosie. Mm, that's okay. All right. Um, just like labs and corgis. Do they eat a lot? <laughs> um, so it seems like they're always hungry and people are either overfeeding them or underfeeding them and they feed them, you know, they, they think pigs, they think slop. And these guys here, they all get um, their pelleted feed and they get fresh cut vegetables every day. So they can still get overweight with that. You just gotta be really careful on your portions. Fruits are occasional, and they're all just for treats. You don't wanna give them fruit on a regular basis. Again, it just adds to their, to their size. So go ahead and the next slide. So I always tell people you can't starve a Great Dane to get a Chihuahua, it just doesn't work that way. Breeders will tell you that if you feed them right, they're gonna stay small, you're gonna starve them, and it's gonna be horrible. 
pigs are natural grazers. So if they have the ability to graze on, on the lawn or a field, if you're lucky enough to have one, that's great. If not, we give them a grass hay. It doesn't have a lot of uh, proteins or anything in it, but it gives them something to munch on. You have the problem in Colombia of which one? <laughs> People feeding their pigs too much? Does it pop back up? Should they answer? Um, and I think that at some point they're going to put um, maybe the notes from this too little. Ah, yes. Um, they're, <laughs> where is the they're going to put the notes back up so you can see these. But, but on the chart on the right, there's different sizes of pigs. You can see what is too thin, what is normal, and what is obese. Um, Rosie here is a little bit on the chunky side. Okay, she's really on the chunky side. Um, but it's not easy to get a pig to, to lose weight. They are like air ferns, so you really have to be careful. Please don't feed them people food and don't feed them candy and cake and all that kind of stuff. It's just, or dog food. Dog food is the worst thing in the world for them. It's really high in sodium and pigs can die from overdose of sodium. So you wouldn't really be careful with the kinds of things that you feed them. Hello, sweetheart. Let me get down here to see Rosie to her face. Um, I think the next slide is good. Nobody has questions yet. Hi, baby. This is Valentina. Valentina um, is the one I was telling you about that we had hoped to have a camera up front, but we couldn't get it to connect for some reasons. So you could meet her in person. We have a few pigs up front, um, and most of them are in the back here. But Valentina is an adorable little girl. Uh, she's about the size of a nine month old pig, but she's five years old. She's, <laughs> she's full grown. Um, and uh, that was Rosie flopping over for a belly rub. Um, Valentina will never will never be right, unfortunately, and it's super sad because she is a really sweet girl. She's beautiful. Um, people want a tiny pig. Well, she's a tiny pig, but she's in really bad shape because of it. So it's just something you need to be aware of. If you ever try to buy one from a breeder, that's what they're going to tell you: is you feed them our diet, and everything will work out. Well, it doesn't works out for them. It doesn't work out for the pig or for you as the owner. Um. So these are the types of things that we feed our pigs. Uh, they get pellets. I tried not to put the bag up there, but I couldn't find a generic one, I'm sorry. Um, and all the vegetables, they get these cut for them every single day. We purchase pellet, uh, veggies fresh. Every other day we purchase them and we make them um, their meals morning and night. And then they have grass to munch on during the day. Um, like I said, not too many fruits. They're just for streets and everything else is for their meals. They love pumpkins, they love squash, carrots, most of them love greens, not all of them, uh, some of them. Uh, and then watermelon is one of their favorites. That's a nice summer treat for them. And strawberries, any kind of sweet fruit is a really good treat for them. But on a regular basis, just pig pellets and vegetables. You don't even have to feed them the vegetables. Technically, the pig pellets have all the nutrients they need, but I like to spoil them. And there was a question, um, Terry, about do you have a special scale that you use to weigh them? Or do you have to take them to the vet and use their scale? Um, you would, we would, if we really wanted to weigh them, we would take them to the vet. Um, after you've been around them long enough, you kind of can determine about how much they weigh by looking at them. Um, so Rosie here, which I, she's laying right against the gate. So <laughs> I'll, I'll give her a second to get up and then we'll move inside with her. Um, but yeah, you can, you can pretty much gauge the weight by, by taking a look at it. There's also something called a hog tape. Um, and it's a measuring tape that you put around there. <laughs> she's, trying to get to, she's just like, I'm sleeping. Uh, it's a tape that goes around their, um, right behind their front legs and it bases their size and it, and it gives you kind of an approximate weight. There's one for horses as well. It's typically made for the big hogs, but it would work for the littler ones. Um, how accurate is, I don't know, because I just look at them and say, like Rosie here, probably, I can see if I can, she'll get up. Rosie here probably weighs about 150 pounds or mm, her belly's big, maybe 175. We'll be on this side, you can see how chunky she is. She's laying down. So, um, is that the only question right now? Yeah? Not yet. She'll get up. She'll figure yeah. out she's not being rubbed in a minute. Okay. Um, so, so people think, you know, they're just like dogs, only smarter. Well, in some ways, yes, they are somewhat like dogs and they are incredibly smart. They are the fifth smartest animal in the world and they have their intelligence level of a three-year-old child. So 
if you can imagine a three-year-old toddler running around your house for the next 20 years, you might be a good candidate for a pig. Oh, and here she comes. Pigs need stimulation. They are so smart that they need something to do. They need something that makes their mind work. Um, and if you can imagine if you had put a kid in your house and gave them nothing to do, it would be pretty much destroyed by the time they were done. And the same thing with pigs. A bored pig is a destructive pig. So if somebody's playing and having a house pig, she keeps moving closer. If somebody's playing on having a house pig, you want to make sure you give them plenty of things to do. There's all kinds of toys that they have for dogs enrichment toys these work really good for the pigs and they're amazing what they can learn how fast they can learn it um, they need outside time they like to root in the ground they like to dig holes you'll see there's all kinds of holes around their hair dug they like to dig holes they like to lay in the mud um, and they're incredibly social uh, they are herd animals so they need interaction whether that's interaction with hello grumpy pig whether that's interaction with humans or other pigs when they're younger sorry those are our grumpy boys yelling are either, what did, I'm sorry, are either males or females? I can catch that whole thing. Are either males or females more dominant in personalities? Um, honestly, it just depends on the herd that you have them in. Um, typically, the males, when they are neutered, are calmer. Just like, you know, a boy dog, when you have them neutered, they tend to be calmer. Uh, if you don't get the girls spayed, they have their ups and downs, just like any female does. But as far as dominance goes, I think you would find that the, the males would be more dominant if they are not neutered. Um, we guys, we don't have a herd situation here. We have the most, uh, I think the most we have is three in a pen. Um, and then two, a lot of them are, are on their own. Part of that is Rosie is adoptable. Sorry, now we're gonna get her backside. Rosie is adoptable and we don't want her to bond with another pig here um, and then not everybody would be adopted because she has that bond with, the, with another pig. It would have to take both pigs. Once they bond, we won't let them go anywhere alone because that's their, that's their person, that's their, their pig. Uh, they, they grow very emotionally attached to their humans, to their animal friends, and uh, we won't separate them once they bond with somebody. And that was another question was if they need other pigs, and you kind of answered that, if they need other pigs around and if they get along with other animals. Well, and I, and I do answer that a little bit more later, but yes, um, when they're young, when they're babies and you're raising them as a, from a baby and they get to be, I don't know, one, two years old, they do okay not having another pig because they have a lot of human interaction. That's when they're cute and they're fun and people spend a lot of time with them. And as they get a little bit older, they slow down and they start wait, thinking, wait, there's nobody that I can talk to that I really know. And so they start sometimes even getting cranky and withdrawn and they want somebody of their own kind so some of them do okay most want at least one of their own kind do they get along with other animals for the most part yes they get along really good with cats typically not so much dogs because dogs are predators and pigs are prey animals um, people think that they're getting a friend for their dog by bringing in a pig and uh, it's not a matter of if it's going to happen it's a matter of when it's going to happen because eventually something is going to snap and somebody's going to get hurt really bad um, usually it's the pig that gets hurt. Rosie here is one of those. And I think we talk about that in our next slide, I think. She is in the picture, yes. One of my wonderful volunteers. This is where I talk about them needing friends when they get a little bit older. Our wonderful volunteers, Jen, is keeping Rosie busy with snacks. Uh, I get a lot of calls from people that want to rehome their pig. And they're two or three or four years old and suddenly he's gotten, he's gotten aggressive and he's pushy and he snaps at people. And uh, when you hear and you ask him all kinds of questions, you really get the feeling of, okay, so this pig pretty much hangs out by himself all the time and he's lonely. And he's trying to get his humans to understand that he needs somebody. May not be the best way to communicate by snapping at them, but it gets their attention uh, sometimes in the wrong way and makes them want to get rid of them. But they do need a friend. Um, they're, any herd animal does not do well alone. Horses don't do well alone. Goats don't do well alone. They need to have some kind of companion. And um, Carrie, there was one other question about enrichment. You were talking a little bit about that. Um, someone asked at the shelter, they have a big hard plastic ball for the dogs that, uh, would that be a good toy? Kind of like a basketball size? Would a pig enjoy playing with something like that? Pigs are very treat motivated. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the enrichment toys I'm thinking of have like little holes in them that where a treat could come out if they push it the right way. Uh, those, kind of, those kind of toys, 
um, or they push a button the right way and there's a treat in there, something they have to think and they can actually reason things out and figure out the solution to them. Um, I've seen quite a few for dogs. I don't think they make any specifically for pigs, but I do use the ones for dogs. I'll like maybe make a hole a bit smaller so the treats are smaller when they come out. Even if it's just pig pellets that you put in there or you put pig pellets in the grass and you spread them out so they can go find them. Give them something to do to keep their little minds busy. They also like ball pits. Um, if you have a, a plastic pool and you put all those little plastic balls in them and then throw a handful of Cheerios or a handful of uh, pig pellets in there and they will spend however long it takes to find every last one of them. They know where they are, they find them. Uh, so it's, it's all kinds of things you can keep them busy with. Someone was also asking about, and I don't know if you know the answer about this, but are there certain types of music that pigs like? Yes, pigs love music. Um, all the animals here love music. We have a stereo in the tack room that we leave on. Um, and I usually just try to tend to something like something quieter. I don't do heavy metal or anything. We do like country, something nice and sweet and mellow. Um, but yeah, they do love music. They love to hear the sounds. They're such social animals that that gives them something. If they had a TV, they would watch it, believe me. Um, I, we, just, uh, we just rescued a farm pig and, she, and um, we took her to another rescue across town. And she says that she came, her, actually, I think she's on this webinar, but she went into the house to come and came back. She left her laptop going with the movie on it and Babe was laying there watching the movie. Uh, so they, are, they like to have stuff going on. Yes, hi, hi, Lynn. So any, is there more questions? That was it. We have one more about um, introducing pigs to other pigs. That might be more in depth than what we're covering um, today, but even if there's a resource for how you would go about. And I am, I am happy to answer any questions at any time if we can't address it here. I, and please put my, our web information information up and our email address whatnot I'm happy to help anybody who needs it um, you can introduce pigs it's you start here's how I start like exactly how she is with another pen next door with a fence between them and I let them hang out forever long they want they'll sometimes they'll fight to the fence sometimes they won't uh, I don't like the whole bloody gory thing because it can very much get that way they always fight for dominance always 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 um, it may be a very short one uh, and it may be a very long one, but I don't do the blood and guts thing. So I let them stay next to each other until they like each other so much, they lay next to each other in the fence. And then you get them into a great big open area, as big as you possibly can, and you Vaseline their ears and their shoulders and their tail, and you just get out of the way. They figure it out, and when they're done figuring it out, somebody's in charge and somebody's not, and they're done. But you can't separate them again. It's a one-time deal because every time you separate them, even if it's just right next door, they're going to go right back at it the next day like it never happened. Very Hopefully that helped. Thank you. Yeah, I think Absolutely. that answered that question. Um, and then is that a goat we hear or is that? Oh. Um, I think I heard a rooster. <laughs> oh, there, yeah, that was a rooster. Yes, we have <laughs> roosters and peacocks and goats and alpacas and pigs and horses and donkeys. I'm surprised the donkeys aren't talking yet. We'll have to do a, a pet talk on each animal topic. Absolutely. <laughs> this one was in high demand because it is such a, you know, a popular pet kind of right now. So, yeah. yeah. And but, you guys have a lot of pigs in the shelter right now in Escondido. Um, we do. We have five available and some more waiting to become available. We did have one adoption. Peaches had been with us for a few months and she did get adopted. Yes. Oh, she, she did? She oh, with the wonderful. In the lay at the beginning of the slideshow, um, she has been adopted. But yeah, if anyone missed our slideshow at the beginning, we have several pigs currently available for adoption through San Diego Humane Society, which is not um, common to have multiple pigs for us. And many of them came from different places. It wasn't like they all came in at once. So um, if you are looking, yeah, Cammie just shared our website as well and um, Saving Animals and Healing Hearts um, website as well. So I'll go ahead and move on to the next slide. And okay, perfect. More questions on these. You talk a little bit about their body language. How to body language. Do you want to cover that now, Terry, or do you want to wait till the end to, to cover body language? Um, let's, let's do that if you could remind me sure. so that we don't. I just want to, um, I want to move out of Rosie's face and I think she might be next up. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll go ahead and, um, I've got a couple, I've got a couple of pigs right here that are very hungry. Oh, everybody else got fed, but they're diet pigs. These, these two boys 
to share real quick. These are uh, part of a, a hoarding group, a hoarding case that came in. Ben is extremely overweight. That's this black one right here. And uh, so he is on a, a really big diet. And Frank is very old and has never been handled and very cranky. So we feed them separate from everybody else. And I usually stand in between them so that Ben doesn't try to steal Frank's good food. Mm. Um, so he's grinding his teeth because he wants to know why he isn't fed and he hasn't. <laughs> so I apologize. So pink it's good body language, um, kind of a demonstration of how they Absolutely. Are Can you hear him grinding his teeth? Language, so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, uh, feed me please. Oh, Rosie, you're going to go get your muddy pole. Of course. So Rosie is who we were just here with. Um, I'm going to show you our mud because Rosie is a mud hog. She loves her mud. Hi, babes. So this is Rosie, and Rosie actually came out of the San Diego Humane Society shelter in Escondido a couple years ago. She had uh, been attacked by dogs, and she looks a little bit different because she does not have a right ear. She only has part of a left ear. You see it's kind of shredded a little bit. And all of this thickness here is all big, humongous scars. Um, and uh, she's been here for a couple years now, and she's adoptable, highly adoptable. She's a super sweet pig, and I think that we have featured her on the adoptions one last time. Um, honestly, though, most people don't adopt adult pigs. They want babies. They want the cuties. Even though this pig is not going to have any issues. Oh, there she goes. She loves belly rubs, and she gets far enough away I can't reach her through the fence. Um, but this is what happens when I when I say it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when. It really is. Um, I've received last week. Last week we rescued a mama pig, daddy pig, and four baby pigs, three of them were with her at the time, and I think I've got the fourth one on the back end. At any rate, uh, Mama Pig had been attacked by their dog, and um, they couldn't afford to take her to the vet, so we went and got her and the baby, took her to the vet, and the dog had completely destroyed her face. She had, like, no mouth left. Her, her uh, nasal cavities were completely crushed and gone, and she was full of maggots, and we had to euthanize her. So now we have orphan piglets because somebody's dog decided they wanted to get the pig. Um, and it happens way, way, way too much. Dogs that have grown up with their pig, oh, my dog will never do it. He's had where I'm that pig for the last five years. He'll never do anything like that. It will happen. I promise you it will happen. We never leave them unsupervised. There is something about a pig's scream. If you've ever heard a, a pig scared, they scream this incredibly shrill scream. And I have seen the mellowest dogs just go, what was that? And they get in this, this mode of hunt and pray and um if you're not home to stop that and you're right, not right there they're going to take your pig out i don't care how long they've known them so it's very scary rosie lived thank god many 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 don't on um, the other side of that is if you have tiny little dogs and those tiny little dogs start thinking they're big which i know mine do and they go after your pig your pig's likely going to kill your dog so it goes both ways uh, you know, pigs have extremely sharp teeth and uh, they, can, they can protect themselves to a degree, and a little dog doesn't hold a, camera, a candle to that. Yeah, they have a crazy scream. Um, especially babies, they, just, they get scared so easy. They'll scream real super easy, so that really drives the dogs to go after them a lot faster. Um, so if you just want to get a pig as a companion for your dog, please don't. Um, and please always have the ability to keep them separate if you aren't going to be right there with them. Sometimes even when you're right there with them, there's nothing you can do to stop it. So it's just not always safe. Next slide would be great. Hi, BB. So mud and water. I have had so many people say when they are in a pen, nothing but mud. Well, they love mud, don't they? I actually had a shelter up north ask me that. I'm like, well, no, not necessarily. Pigs love mud and water in the hot summer months because they can't sweat. So the only way for them to cool down is to get wet in a pool. With These guys have piggy pools where we just got a bunch of big ones that are we did a fundraising for. We're going to get some new pig pools that fit them perfectly. Or mud. Some pigs prefer just the mud. Um, Rosie prefers both. <laughs> but it, it keeps them not only protected from the sun, but it also acts as a fly repellent. Um, needs to say, when there's wetness, there's flies. And uh, in a farm, there's lots of flies. So they like to get after the pigs, and the mud keeps it away a little bit. They need shelter to sleep in, whether it's daytime or nighttime, whether it's cold or hot. They want to be inside and, and sheltered. In the wintertime, they love to be covered in blankets or straw. If you're going to be an outside completely, they need to keep warm. 
And uh, in the summer, oddly enough, they still like to eat under blankets a lot of times. So we'll give them, we'll give them light sheets and let them hang out under those. Um, but they are, they like the creature comforts. It's not that they all get it, but um, if you can, that's what they really prefer. And it's really good for them to have that ability. We have misters. I don't know if you can see the mister lines. Um, because it, we're in Ramona and it does get really, really, really hot. Um, we've had a couple of pigs already overheat this year. Uh, one, because he's a big, big boy and he went to roll over in his mud puddle and he got stuck and he couldn't get up. So he was laying in the hot sun um, until uh, probably, probably an hour or so before somebody came out um, and we were going to do vegetables and saw him stuck. Uh, and they can die so easily from heat stroke. So it, it gets kind of scary when they lose their hair. I can't read all of it. When they lose their hair. Do they get sunburned when they lose Oh, their hair? oh, yes. Yes, they absolutely do. Potbelly pigs get sunburned. Um, we have a, we use kitty, kids sunscreen. We have a few farm pigs. The farm pigs get burnt no matter what. Even though you can put sunscreen on them for days, they get burnt. Um, but these guys can be protected with sunscreen. The darker pigs, not so much, but the white pigs, absolutely, yes. Rosie has never really lost all of her hair. She'll get thinner, but see how much more hair she has than the other ones? They come out, but it's weird that she doesn't lose all of her hair. A lot of times you would look for a piglet, and you're like, oh my gosh, they're so cute. And they're, yeah, it's a pure prop belly pig. Well, it's not always the case. I actually had a call last week from a lady who said that uh, her husband brought home a pot belly pig and it just got too big and it kept getting bigger and she needed to rehome it. And she said it was a pot belly, not quite a year old. And she, I said, well, send me pictures. Let me see what we can do. And um, she sent me pictures and I, I just went, oh my gosh. It was a half pot belly pig it looked like, but the other half is a guinea hog, which is another type of farm pig. And um, we have one here that's half and half and he's probably 350 pounds or bigger. Um, and that's what she was looking at, was thinking was a pot belly pig, and she only had a tiny little yard. So uh, people lie all the time. They, you know, they just get two pigs, and they think breed them, sell them, and they make some money. So one way to tell, if you're looking at a pot belly pig, you see, and there goes she goes again. See her tail and how straight it is. Um, pot belly pigs have straight tails, and they'll wag and wag and wag like crazy when they're happy. This other little pig in the picture is our Nelson. And Nelson is a uh, farm pig. That's when he was a baby and he actually fit in a harness. But his tail is completely curled. So that's one way you can tell. There's a lot of other ways. But that is a super easy way. Um, is if it's got a curly tail, that is not a pot belly and don't buy it. Unless you want a big farm pig and you have room for it because they're awesome animals. They're super sweet too. So training your pig. I, it's not just for the tricks, but they sure are fun. And they learn them super, super fast. But take the time to train your pig for many reasons. A harness and a leash, because that will enable you to take them for walks. You can take them anywhere. And if there's ever an emergency, you can pop that harness and leash on and walk them away, run them away, throw them in your car, whatever you want. Um, that, is, that is primary. And I always train the young ones to a harness and leash. Um, you can teach them to walk up and down a ramp, get in and out of a car. You can teach them to sit, spin around, shake, high five, play piano, identify colors. Uh, they can, or they're amazingly smart and they catch it on so quickly. Um, and they will learn almost anything. I've seen pigs do obstacle courses, uh, and it creates an incredible bond with your pig it, because they are working towards something with you, <laughs> Rosie, <laughs> your baby. Um, and you have a bond with them that People don't really get, I mean, I guess they get a bond with the dog, true, but pigs are so much at a deeper level, um, and the, the training them just gives you that tight bond with them. Uh, we just adopted out a baby not too long ago that did all of those tricks and then some, but she was shy of strangers, and anytime somebody would come that she would be shy of, I'd give them some treats and tell them how to, how to give her commands to sit and spin and whatnot, and as soon as she started doing that, she was perfectly fine with them. Next, there you go. So Charlie, I wanted to introduce you to Charlie out front, but like I said, our camera wasn't working. And this is, I just, just want to highlight, not only because I'm so proud of him, but for, for you guys to understand and realize that just because they're in the shelter doesn't mean a darn thing. Um, you know, just because other people couldn't handle them doesn't mean a darn thing. Charlie was up in one of the Riverside shelters and uh, he was moments away from being euthanized. And we took him in and he was, as you can see this picture right here, he was super sick. And uh, he was, he was um, 
real tiny, real skinny, had really bad skin issues. Hi, babe. And he was still intact. And we brought him home and we had him neutered. Oh, and he had some good nutrition and he had everything that he needed to become a really awesome pig. And that was in May of last year. And in July of last year, Charlie started filming a uh, show in Hollywood. And he was the star of a charity fashion show for dogs. He was the shining star that came out in the end. You see him in his little tux right there, which is one made just for him. He walked up and down ramps. He did uh, photo shoots. He was working in a hotel lobby and he walked down the red carpet. It was pretty amazing. And he'd only been with us for a few months. That's how incredibly smart they are. And uh, just the change that they can make. So they have such incredible potential if you just let them do it and make them a part of your life. So a lot of people say, well, pigs can't be potty trained. You can't have them indoors. Absolutely not the case. Pigs are easily potty trained. Uh, we have, I think, seven pigs here that go in and out. Four of them have their own room and they have a huge doggy door they go in. They sleep inside at night and they hang outside during the day. If it's too hot, they go in under the ceiling fan. Or if it's too cold, they go in where it's heated. Um, and they easily train to litter, which is the pine pellet litters, um, not kitty litter. They, they easily as babies train to litter boxes. I wouldn't want to put a big, huge pig in the litter box, but I guess you could. Um, and they train to go outdoors. They can train to be, ring a bell when they want to go out. They can train to go out their own way. Anything you want, they can learn it. Um, some of them prefer to be inside. Some of them prefer to be outside. Like I said, I start all of the young ones inside, and then they make that choice. You'll tell if they want to go outside, they go outside on their own, and they want to be out there. Usually, they want to be wherever there is action. If there's people inside, that's where they're going to want to be. If they have friends outside, that's where they're going to want to be. Is that a question? Something about coyotes. Do coyotes ever try and get them in the daytime? Um, in some places they do. Here they do not, simply because I have horses and donkeys. And my donkeys and horses are on the perimeter, and the pigs are inside of that. Because they will not, a coyote will not come past a horse or a donkey. Um, but if you just had pigs out in the open, then yes, they would. They would come over in packs. Um, Rosie's a pretty big pig, but they could take her down pretty easily. And then somebody else was wondering, how many pigs do you have? Mm -hmm. I think somewhere around 35 or so. And then somebody else also had a question about if you allow visitors and or volunteering or should they check on your website um they can absolutely oh, look at all this coming over go absolutely go on our website for volunteers um we do have volunteers all the time um everything from a feeding shift to uh, animal care teams um we are going to be doing tours as soon as the covid stuff lets up and we're allowed to um, we do wear masks here and we maintain a social distance right now. I'm by myself and the pigs don't care. Um, but yes, absolutely. We love volunteers. We are going to be doing tours. We're actually talking about starting virtual tours because obviously COVID isn't going away anytime soon. Doesn't seem like, um, so we're constant, we're contemplating that right now. Um, but yes, we love, we love education. We love to teach people and we really want people to understand what these guys are all about so that the craziness can stop some point. What? Okay. <laughs> no oh, we know we have, yeah, we are all volunteer run. We are no paid employees. I work a full-time job. Um, everybody else pretty much works a full-time job and we all do this on the side just to keep everybody fed and happy and taken care of. And it looks like you're already getting positive feedback on the virtual tour idea. Oh yeah, that's wonderful. Good to know. Um, so commitment, yeah, commitment's a thing, especially with pigs. Owning a pig is really a lifetime commitment. It has to be. On average, they live about 20 years, and uh, they feel happiness, sadness, fear, love, abandonment, loneliness. I have um, not even a remote joke. I had a five-year-old pig that I transported. Uh, some ladies insisted that she had to find him a home. She'd had him for his whole life. And uh, he was obviously terrified of everything. I home rehomed him to a wonderful person that I know very well. And he would never bond with another animal. He wouldn't bond with a pig. He wouldn't bond with the people. He came out of his crate, ate, and went back into his crate. And that's all he would ever do. 28 days later, she took him his dinner and he was dead. Uh, and I would lay my last dime to say that he died of a broken heart. And they absolutely get that 
emotionally attached to their people. So um, just because you're having a human baby, that doesn't mean you can't keep your pig baby. Just because you're moving doesn't mean you can't look for a place where you can have your pig. Um, if you're going to make that commitment, please, please make it for a lifetime because it's not fair. So um, do your own research. Don't just listen to one person or, or two people. Don't listen to me even. Do your own research. Look it up in the internet um, and you'll see, you'll learn everything you need to know for the most part. Um, find out if you're zoned for pigs. That's huge. A lot of people don't do that. And we, they find that they're not zoned and suddenly zoning comes along and says, hey, you got to get rid of your pig. Uh, and that's hard. I mean, what do you do? If you own a home, you have a pig, you've had them for 10 years, and now they're going to tell you you have to get rid of them? It's heartbreaking for both you and the pig. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> uh, check and see if you have an HOA. A lot of HOAs will not allow you to have pigs, no matter where you live. Um, if you rent your own, make sure if you're going to rent that your landlord's okay with it. Most will say no. They think that pigs are gross and disgusting and stinky, and which none of which they are, but people just don't know a lot of misinformation out there um make sure that every member of your household is happy about having a pig if your other half is fine whatever just to make you happy eventually it's not going to make them happy and they're going to complain enough that you'll end up having to rehome your pig or rehome the other one that's what i did um got rid of the two-legged one and now i have four-legged pigs it's all good um visit a rescue or a sanctuary so you can get a reality check of what you're really going to be putting yourself into understand what they're all about uh, because they're different than any animal you've ever had if you never had one. Um, I got my first one a little over eight years ago, and I absolutely fell in love head over heels with this pig. Um, and looking in his eyes was like looking into my own soul. Um, and he's the one that started all this, so I blame it all on him. Um, and does your pig fit your lifestyle? If you are gone every single weekend or you're um, out partying all the time, and you just want a pig for fun for your friends, don't. Just please don't. It's not fair. Um, they want to be part of your life. And if your life can include them, that's wonderful. But they're not the kind of animal you can just stick by itself out in the backyard and play for it with it every once in a while when you feel like it. Because that pig is going to destroy your backyard and be a very unhappy pig. So, make it your life. So after all of that, you still want a pig? It's going to be one of the most eye-opening, soul-searching decisions you will ever make. What are common ailments and diseases? Honestly, if you care for your pig right, as far as feeding, taking care of them, trimming, having their hooves trimmed, doing everything that you know is right by them, they don't have too many. There is a disease called erysipelas, which does happen, but not many people show their pigs or take them out where they're going to be getting, sorry Rose, where they're going to be getting a, into a, other pigs that may have that. What? Oh, what, is Bernie out? Thirty's not out. <laughs> we're going to take you around somebody else's. We're only sitting here looking at Rosie. We'll see if somebody else is around. Um, sorry, we're going to walk a little bit. Um, so, there is something super special about pigs. And thank you. Oh, that's good. That's all right. Look at I. Like this is this is our diet dinner. Lettuce and lots of waters and tomatoes. Yeah, it's good for them. Um, yeah, you can give Chris this first. Sorry. Sorry about that, you guys. Here we have Pumba. Hey, Pumba. And that's Waylon. Waylon is a miniature baby doll sheep that came in. They came in as a bonded pair. Hi, Pumbies. Um, so sometimes you get bonuses with the pigs. You get sheep. So um, that's the most that we ask of anybody is to educate yourself. And if you feel like you're well-educated enough that you know what you're getting into, then make that commitment and stick with it because I, they deserve that much. So that's the end of the PowerPoint. Happy to take any kinds of questions. I have no idea we're at in time. Ooh, we're early. I talk too fast. We're early, but we did have some questions that I know we didn't get to initially, especially on the body language. It would be, I think, really okay. amazing if you could maybe show us with these friends here, like what some body language, um, you know, positive and maybe you could tell us, you know, what would it look like when a pig maybe is comfortable with being around people or maybe not feeling well, like what would that look like? Absolutely. Um, well, this would be a good pig to show you what it was like if they wanted to kill you. Um, <laughs> Pumba, Pumba is um, an interesting little fellow. He can be very, very nice. 
and uh, you can pet him. And all of a sudden you'll see, this is called a mohawk. You see that? He hasn't lost all his hair yet. This is called a mohawk. And uh, I think Pumba might be just a little bit bipolar. Uh, so one minute he's super nice and he's loving getting petted and his ears rubbed. They usually love their ears rubbed. He'll even lay down for a belly rub. But right for some reason, right in the middle of petting him, he'll suddenly pick his hawk up. He'll, he'll make a funny growling noise and his teeth will come out. Uh, male pigs have, I'm not going to show you his, um, his uh, tusks because I'd have to open his mouth and I don't think I want to. Um, but if you can see, he's got a little bit of a tweak in his lip right there. And that is where his tusk is hanging out underneath his lip. Um, and those tusks are razor sharp. That is their defense. The, the boys get these razor sharp tusks that they can swipe their head and slice your leg right open or slice another pig right open if they're defending their herd. Hey, baby. Um, I, I think Chris's tusks are pretty good right now. Oh, Chris's tusks are out? Oh, Chris would be a really good one for you guys to see too. Um, is he eating? Perfect. Uh, this is Chris. Here's your own, it's your own little virtual tour now. Um, this is Chris. Chris came to us two years ago. Monday was his gotchaversary. And uh, there was a Facebook post by a woman wanting to know if, wanting to know if you could um, shoot a pig in their area. Uh, she hated this pig. She said he was aggressive. You couldn't get closer than eight feet from him, and he would charge you. He would eat all their chicken food. We'd eat all their horse food. And she just hated him. And I said, okay, I'll take him. And she said, you're going to be sorry. I said, that's fine. I don't mind being sorry. I'll take him. Uh, so we went to pick him up and come to find out that her adult son had been beating him his whole life. So he actually has a neurological head tilt. His head is always pretty much tilted to the left. And um, literally has been here for two years. And anytime somebody would come into his pen with him, he would scream like he's being beaten to death and he would run and hide and shake. It's the most pitiful thing you've ever seen to um, have a pig that terrified of people. And uh, about three weeks ago, he just finally decided that I wasn't going to kill him. And he started letting me touch him. And it's been just leaps and bounds since then. He's eating his dinner, but he will, you can see his tusks. Hey, babies. See his tusks on the side of his mouth right there. Hi, sweet love. Hi. Where are you going? Um, they're razor sharp. And a pig this big, he's probably a good 250, 275 or so. Um, hi, baby. Chris has now, in the last few weeks, he's going to lay down right here. He has gotten to where he hears my voice, and he comes out, and he lays down for a belly rub. No, I am not even kidding a little bit when I say this pig would not allow you within 10 feet of him without screaming terrified. Are you trying to get on the ground? He's trying to lay down all the way down. <laughs> so uh, he has made peace with the fact that I'm not going to hurt him, and it has taken me two years to do it. So the damage people can inflict on these guys is insane. So his body language, as far as that, was simply fear. He would run. Um, but if you were to see an aggressive pig, he's not going to run the other way. His, his mohawk's going to go up. And he will typically give you like a side eye. And then they, they charge you. And they charge you with their teeth gashing. I know, sweetheart. Um, he will get his tusk trimmed when we do a foot trim on him. I've honestly never allowed the trimmers come do him because I don't didn't want them to scare him any more than he was already scared and he was it was pitiful he would just uh he would just make me cry he was just so scared all the time and look at him he's let me touch his ears he's let me touch his face and uh th this is the reward this is the reward you get for doing this kind of stuff because you get the, they get their lives back huh Chris yes you're a good boy now for with him, you mentioned the, the hoof trimming. Can you talk a little bit about that and like what routine veterinary Absolutely. or um, like Mensa pig would require? Absolutely. Um, typically, you get a hoof trim every, it depends on the pig, of course, through every three to six months. <laughs> oh, you're all right. Um, as you can see, Chris's feet are long. They're not like flip around long, but they're longer than they should be, and that was simply because I wouldn't let it get done. If he would have gotten in danger, then I would have had him sedated and done it, but I didn't see any point in doing that if he didn't need it that much. So they, their feet do need trimmed on a regular basis. Um, we actually have people who come down from Orange County to do it. They know what they're doing. Um, the, uh, the lady that trained them has been doing it for 30 or 40 years, and she used to do all the pigs. 
Um, and now we have the people she's trained to come down and they flip them onto their back. It doesn't hurt them. They hold them on their back. One person holds while the other one trims with a pair of like horse nippers. And then they use a uh, Dremel to smooth them out. Uh, so that is um, how they do their feet. Vets can do it as well. Um, I don't like the idea of sedating the pigs because it's really hard on them. Their bodies just don't do well with sedation and they have to uh, reverse it as well. So if you can just get a vet who has the ability to flip them and do their feet, that's wonderful. I know Darth, Dr. Harlan at East County Large Animal Practice is able to do that and he's done a few of ours like that. When they've come in, you know, and they needed to have a vet for something else, he went ahead and does their feet while he's here. Um, but a farrier, some farriers know how to do it. I'm talking a farrier like a horse farrier. I've also had several of them not know what they're doing, say they knew what they're doing and hurt the pig. So I'm really, really particular about who does their feet. And at the same time they do their feet, they actually do their tusks. They remove their tusks with this, it's a wire, almost like a piano wire, I guess. And it comes off amazingly fast and you can't get it too close to the nerves, but it, it's enough so that they're not sticking out sharp like that anymore. And then they take the Dremel and they smooth it just a little bit so it's not cutting them in the mouth. Their tusks only need to be done like once a year or so. Maybe not that long. And the girls don't get the tusks. They get very tiny ones. Um, you can tell a lot of times how old a pig is by the thickness of their tusk. Chris has a pretty good sized tusk right there, at least the thickness of it. Um, and he is probably five, six years old. Uh, but the older, older pigs will be much bigger and uh, longer as well if they haven't been done. So body language. <laughs> Chris is blind, by the way. Um, he hears my voice. That's why he's coming over here. He just, he follows me around like that. But you see his head. I don't know if you can see his head tilt. I'm sure that that he's always got his head tilted like that. Um, so he hears me. He knows I'm here, but he is blind. Um, oh, babies. Um, body language. Gosh, pigs are super easy. Um, if you come down to <laughs> he's going down for another belly rub. If you come down to their level, they don't know you and they're scared. Standing up. Um, at your full height is intimidating to them. So unless you think that that pig's gonna charge you, you wanna squat down and get down to their level. Um, that gives them a little bit more confidence not to be afraid of you. Um, and you wait for them, you don't approach them because they are the type, of <laughs> they are a prey animal and they will run, um, they'll run away. So you wanna get down to their level, you wanna wait for them, bring them treats. They're so mo food motivated, most of them are, that um, if they see something good to eat, they're likely to come over and let you know if they're okay or not. They will growl at you. They'll give you plenty of signs that they're not happy. Um, it's rare you'll find a pig that will just charge you without any kind of warning. They give warning signs. Did that answer your question at all? Yeah, I think that's so interesting. I mean, it sounds a lot like we teach, you know, dog body language here because that's mm -hmm. what people often encounter and misunderstand. Um, and so often, you know, you hear about a bite where the bite was out of nowhere, but really, very rarely. They gave every warning they sign. Yeah. They gave warning signs, but you know, just we tell people, you know, dogs speak dog and we don't. And so pigs speak pigs. So to have a pig, you really need to learn to speak their language so that you yeah. can just understand what they're trying to communicate to you, just like any other animal, rather than that's right. We've got and people misunderstand them. I mean, just like dogs, they mm -hmm. misunderstand them. But a pig that's aggressive at two or three years old that doesn't get a lot of attention, they're not being aggressive because they hate you. They're being aggressive because you don't understand them at all to know that they're lonely and they're sad, yeah, um, yeah. you know? And it's just like any, any of the animals, they can't communicate with words, but they can communicate with feelings and they feel your heart. If you're terrified of them, they know it. Mm -hmm. And a herd animal needs a leader. So you're going to lead, follow, or get out of the way. Um, in, in my horse herds, my donkey herds, my pig herds, I'm, I'm going to lead always going to lead because then that, they have the confidence to follow and they have the confidence to trust me that I'm going to always take care of them. And that's what you have to gain with your animal. Um, it's dogs as well. You know, you've got to be leader of the pack. Mm, that's so interesting. And um, another thing I've heard you mention a little bit is just the use of food to kind of help motivate them or help them feel more comfortable. Um, is there any like formal, like, positive reinforcement training that you do with pigs to like um, acclimate them to like the hoof trims or to any kind of certain touch or is that something that you recommend that people do or it's more kind of informal just using um, treats well, to relationship build? 
I think relationship building for one, for sure. Um, and the tricks that you teach them, it's always immediately followed up. And, and as with any animal, the faster you reward them for what they did right, the faster they're going to do it the next time. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually use Cheerios a lot with pigs. Uh, I don't think I've ever met a pig that doesn't love Cheerios. And they're small and they can eat them fast. So they're easily, you get a lot of work done in very small amount of time. I can't see what that said. I'm sorry. There was a, some kind of question. Um, but absolutely, if you want them to do a certain behavior, unfortunately, uh, the feet, unless you start them. Chris, where are you going, baby? Chris going to open the gate, Jen. He's, he was opening the gate. Uh, Chris, for the first time in the two years he's been here, followed me out of the gate and walked around the property the other day. And um, it was like I cried the whole time <laughs> to see him just make that move. Um, but anyway, positive reinforcement. If you have a younger pig, you can absolutely teach them to lay down and let you file their hooks. Where's baby? I see you. So you file them with a fingernail file to start with so they feel that vibration. And um, you can even get the tiny little hoof trimmers for ponies and teach them that that little nipping sound is okay. Every time they hear that nipping sound, you give them a cheerio and tell them a good positive reinforcement for doing it right. By the time they're a little bit older, they're just going to say, oh, you want to do my nails? Here you go. And I'll get cheerios for it. And you're going to do that. Same thing with baths. Pigs don't necessarily like to get in the bathtub. Um, but if you put bathtub water in and you either put peanut butter on the wall so they can lick it off or Cheerios in the tub, they will find something to do with that food while you're washing them. Works pretty well. Terry, do you have any suggestions? Someone was saying that they have an indoor pig who's um, very territorial with visitors and wants to bite people coming in. Do you have any um, suggestions for that? Giving people treats to give, toss to him, uh, maybe neutering? Um, no, because what he's showing you is that he's the one who's in charge, not you. So if he is charging people, yes, yes, they're, they're territorial and yes, they are, they think they're protecting, but you have to make sure that you are the one in charge. What are you going to do with that bowl, Chris? Um, ha if you have not ever heard of it, look up something called move the pig. And it is simply an exercise of who is in charge. And that pig has to know that you are. So um i always use a pig board if they're charging because you never know when they may or may not use their their uh teeth on you if they're angry about something but you can't let your friends do it because they are the ones that are going to get bit and they don't know the pig well enough but that pig has to listen to you so if he goes to charge somebody and you say no no step back they should do it if they don't then you need to work on that and i would Chris is going to walk right up to me. And he's probably not a good one to do it to because I don't want to upset him. But you want to put a board. I'm going to I'll stand back here where you can see where he is. If he were to turn charge at me, I would have, it can be a lid to a plastic bin. There are pig boards that have handles on them which are plastic and easy to move around. We have one of those. Those are really nice to have. If not, just something so that if he hits that board, it's not your leg that he's getting. So he goes to charge you. You're going to walk straight towards him your shoulders up, your body in full erect position, and you're going to look him straight in the face and you're going to say no. And you're going to push him back with that board at the shoulder. The idea is that you want this pig to turn around and walk away from you. And the very second that he turns around and walks away, then you stop, you back up, and you know, he knows he did the right thing. So you are in charge, not him. Um, and you can do that with anything. As they get a little bit older, kind of between young and teenage-ish, they start testing the waters a little bit. You just don't let them get away with it ever from the very beginning. If there's a pig standing in your way and you want to go past them, they move. You don't go around. You have to always keep in your mind, this is my house. I'm in charge. He has to do what you want him to do. I'm not talking about forcing him. I'm not talking about punishing him at all. But if you walk up to your pig and say, excuse me, and they don't move, I just lean my leg against the shoulder. And I tell him, come on, let's go. And then they move. But I do that from the very beginning. Thanks, Terry. And would you, so, because I'm just wondering if, if people have continued questions, like if someone is struggling with their, their pig at home and they're even, you know, maybe considering having to rehome their pig, would, would you be a resource for like talking through individual Absolutely. issues Absolutely. or is there another re you're a resource for that? So um, we'll share your email address um, right now in the chat so that we can let people know, you know, if, if you're having those issues, um, 
maybe like on a, a more personal level if if you can work through some of those i don't even know if we're doing like sometimes video conferencing and things for people like looking at doing like telehealth kind of stuff so you can actually see it and help mm -hmm. people work through it so that they don't end up having to you know rehome a pet that they want to work with not saying that's the situation here but um I'm wondering, you know, if we get calls to the Humane Society, even with behavioral issues, if we could right. refer them to you, um, absolutely. So you could maybe help people to work through some of those things so they don't have to. Yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I will do anything that I can to help somebody keep their pig rather than rehome them. Um, it's, it's just hard on everybody. And the pig doesn't realize that he's doing anything wrong. He's just being a pig. You know, yeah. it's our fault, not theirs. So yeah, absolutely there to help people. I do work full time. So if you email me and I don't get back to you for a few hours, that's why. Just be patient. Um, and I will get back to you and I will help you in any way I can. So I just shared your email here in the chat. Thank you. Um, and so people can use that um, as a reference. If people have other you know, questions too that we don't answer today, but if um, we do have time for a few more questions, if, if other people yeah. have questions, these are great. It's really nice to um, hear from everyone. And it sounds like there are quite a few people with pigs on the, the call right now. Can you tell us in the chat, do you have a pig? Are you curious about pigs? Um, you know, what brought you to our webinar tonight? We'd love to know, um, you know, who we're reaching. If you already have pigs at home or if maybe you're thinking of getting a pig. Alyssa's interested in getting a first pig. Awesome. Awesome. And Alyssa, were you in San Diego or are you, um, you might have been from. Can you hear me? I can. Okay. No, uh, we're in Sacramento. Oh, okay. Well, I'm happy to help you um, virtually. And I do know other rescues up in that area that might be able to help oh. you as well. Wonderful. Thank you for that information. We'll definitely be getting in contact with you later. It's great. Um, we have a volunteer at a shelter that gets pigs in. Um, so probably doing some interactions there. A volunteer at Shadows Fund in Lampoc and they have pigs there. So awesome. It's, so people are just trying to maybe learn more about pigs for their volunteer roles that they do. Uh, I know we did have, I'm not sure if they attended, but we had a couple staff members and volunteers from San Diego Humane Society as we're seeing more pigs come in. Um, I've learned a lot tonight, certainly. I don't see pigs day to day because they're usually at our Escondido campus, but this is really great information as a staff member to be able to have um, just a starting point to um, kind of get to know pigs. Awesome. We have Julian as um, an owner of a mini pig called Bacon, who's two years old, around 25 kg, um, and they live in, oh, this is our friend from Columbia. Um, Someone can't have pigs at the moment, but would like to educate the, um, educate themselves and pass the info on to others. Thank you so much. A veterinarian working with unconventional pets, um, leadership in Mini Oink, Columbia. Nice. <laughs> um, and we do work to educate people. How, and that's so great that, that people heard about us all the way out there. I wonder how that happened. I love it. Um, let's see. People looking to, um, you know, put an end to that myth of the the mini pigs and, and pig breeding. That would be, we need education. We need so much education out there for people. And I'll share just one resource that we have. Um, this is, you know, not by any means enough information, but whenever, you know, we have people that, oh, I'm not sure if anyone can see this. I'll turn off my background. We have just a little one sheet that we, when people come in and they're just curious about pigs, uh, we will share just this this resource here that has you know just a quick background information on pigs, um, more information. So I can include this in the follow up. I will be sending a follow up to all of our participants um, after this, uh, where people I'll again link Terry's email address um, and the website so that you guys can follow up with Saving Animals and Healing Hearts, um, maybe seeing about volunteer opportunities through them if that was something I know some people were interested in, um, and also just um, contacting Terry with any questions and also San Diego Humane Society's website where we do have currently five pigs available for adoption. Um, and that'll all be sent um, to your email. So if you registered for this event uh, via email um, and receive the notification, you will be receiving those um, follow-ups. 
let's see, other people um, just want experience, uh, retiring um, from SDSU at the end of the month and would like to volunteer. Wonderful. Did anyone else um, have any questions for Terry while we have her and Chris here? I have a random question. So I have noticed um, pigs wagging their tail and we were talking about body language earlier and I was wondering if it's any way wagging their tail because they're happy like dogs? Is it wagging their tail because they're trying to get flies away? Is it something else, a combination of things? What does a wagging tail, pig tail mean? A wagging tail means a happy pig. That is all it means. You can walk through here any day and see lots of piggies stand and they're wagging. Wow. And what's interesting is the people that they recognize, they will hear their voice and their tail wags faster. Aww. So yes, it's, that's a, that is a happy pig. That's a good thing. What? Rosie has her tail wagging. Oh, she sure does. Here's Rosie. I don't know if you guys can see her that far. Is Rosie over there, her tail just wagging away? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it truly means they're just happy pigs. Somebody was um, also wondering if you can speak about um, cooney pigs, cooney coonies versus potbelly pigs. Absolutely. Cooney cooney pigs are, like I said initially, originally out of New Zealand. They are uh, larger than a pot belly, but they are smaller than a full size farm pig. People actually use them as meat a lot of times. Um, they are, <laughs> they have such a kind person. Personality. Pot bellies are awesome animals, don't get me wrong, but they can sometimes be moody. Uh, you know, something doesn't, doesn't hit them the right way and they get a little snotty with you. I have never seen these guys even think about it. As soon as you go in there and sit down, they're going to lay down right next to you. I want you to rub their belly. And as long as you let them rub their belly, they'll lay next to you and hang out. Uh, they are so sweet. Uh, they have, they're just bigger pigs. They're more grazers. They want to be out moving around quite a bit more. Um, these guys just love their water. So they have a massive amount of mud in their pen because they dump their big old pool on top of themselves. Um, and they're just really awesome. You, you unfortunately find a lot of people selling them for meat. Um, that's, I mean, these guys are pretty cool. We have, we have, we've got three out of the same slaughter option. Three of them are, sorry, five, three of them are living up in Ukaipa in this big, huge, beautiful ranch. And, uh, just living their dream up there. It's awesome. Great. Well, thank we you. We, Go ahead. Sorry. We, we also have, um, they're all the way over, but we also have some farm pigs, Yorkshire farm pigs. Um, and if you've never seen a thousand pound pig, um, it's, it's quite a sight. <laughs> uh, and we have Rita who came out of a hoarding situation and she um, is about a thousand pounds. She's six, seven years old. And Nelson, who actually came from Puerto Rico, he is also a Yorkshire farm pig, and he's um, about 18 months old now, and he's probably 700 pounds. Uh, he's a big, big boy, but I've raised him since he was a tiny baby. They shipped him over here when he was tiny, and he is just like a big puppy, huge puppy. Um, and they are, Yorkshire's the typical type of pigs that they slaughter for meat, and those are six-month-old babies that they slaughter. I'm glad he's with you. Me too. <laughs> he left out. Yeah, he did. He did. This was so wonderful. Again, I'll do just one last call for any questions. Um, we do have um, Angela plugged here um, an Instagram, a couple Instagram pages on the work they're doing in Colombia. Sounds very interesting. Oh, I'm wonderful. Interested in pigs. I'll go ahead and save this and include it um, in my follow up email so people can check it out. Um, awesome. if, unless anyone has any other questions, I guess we'll go ahead and sign off and say goodbye. And thank you so much, Terry. This was such a pleasure to learn about pigs with you um, and get to see in person these very happy and well cared for pigs. It's just such a special experience. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. We are super excited about this. So hope to hear from all you guys. Yes, we'll have to do it again with um, the other members of the ranch. All the different <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And cool. um, all of our attendees, if you have suggestions for topics you'd like to see for um, pet talks in the future, we're always looking for content. Um, and do feel free to, to sign up. We have a lot of upcoming um, 
TED Talks for the year already scheduled. We are open to doing more, especially now that we have the virtual option and more people can kind of be flexible with their schedules. So please let me know um, in the follow-up email if you have any topics that you would really like to see addressed. Um, and again, thank you so much, everyone. Have a, a great evening. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Take care. You too. I'm so good. Thanks, Cammie.